Welcome back to another rebuild I have for you guys here today. Today it is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. And before I get into this team, I have to mention that as of now, I have the most updated rosters, but EA has not released the rosters after, you know, all the trade deadline transactions. So Dante Fowler is still on this team. I will trade him though to the Rams and try to get as similar value as possible, you know, as to like what they actually got. The thing is though, like Golden Tate won't be on the Eagles, Demarius Thomas won't be on the Texans, Haha -ha Clinton Dix will still be on the Packers, stuff like that. It's not really going to be that big of a deal. But still, I just wanted to point it out in case those players ended up in the end of uh, end of season awards and anybody made a comment about it. I really just wanted to mention that. But let's get into the roster here. This Jaguars team is really good. Blake Bortles, though, is not playing too well. He's been very inconsistent this season. And I think because of that, I will be getting a new quarterback, maybe drafting one, maybe trading for one. I really don't know yet. But I think it's time for Blake Bortles to take a step back and to not play for this team anymore, or at least be a backup. Maybe I'll keep him. Depends on his cap hit. Honestly, I'm not sure what it's all about. I will most likely trade him because he probably has a lot of trade value. He does play really well in simulation, though. I shouldn't mention that. So keeping him on the team would not be a bad idea. I'm sure he would throw for like over 4,000 yards almost every season. But still, I think it would be fun to see a new face in there at quarterback. Leonard Fournette. Is a great running back to have in simulation. He just can't stay on the field this season, which is a shame. He is a great running back. You know, he's been good since he's come in when he has played, though. Carlos Hyde just got added to this team. I'll probably trade him because he's definitely going to have trade value. TJ Yeldon might be on the move. And then Corey Grant. He's very fast, right? 96 speed. Yeah, he's really fast. This team has a lot of good backup running backs. There's no need to have all of them in simulation, at least. So I'll probably trade a couple. This wide receiver core really isn't that bad. Marquise Lee, though, is injured, which sucks. He's a good wide receiver. I kind of want to keep him as the number one. I, I really like Keelan Cole. I think Keelan Cole is a great wide receiver. Catches a lot. Like, he's really good catching. I mean, maybe not so in the game, but watching him play, he catches a lot of passes. He's pretty reliable as well. But uh, I think I'm going to have him play in the slot. D.D. Westbrook will probably take the number two then. I think that just makes the most sense with these guys because I want Keelan Cole and Marquise Lee getting the majority of the targets. And then also they have, you know, Dante Moncrief. DJ Chark is a talented rookie, but I don't really see him developing much considering he's a 73. Dante Moncrief will probably be on the move, but DJ Chark will stay. Rashad Green, I guess, will stay. This offensive line isn't too bad, I guess, because Andrew Norwell and Brandon Linder, fantastic at their respective positions. But other than that, really, no one stands out. Cam Robinson, you're young, though. I know that much. You're 22 years old with quick development. I might shift you over to right tackle. Because I don't want a 73 overall player playing left tackle. Maybe even a guard probably doesn't make too much sense. But just, if you have done rebuilds before, you know that having a low overall left tackle is a terrible idea. AJ Canton is rather young too. He's only 26, but still he's only a 73. Jeremy Parnell is going to be moved. He's 32 years old. Not a bad right tackle, but still, I definitely want him to leave. Austin Safarian Jenkins, a super athletic tight end. I'll definitely be keeping him on the team. 86 speed, 86 catching. He is really not that bad. I'm pretty sure he's hurt in real life, which kind of sucks. O'Shaughnessy is not a bad backup. They have Niles Paul, apparently. Probably trade him. This defense, though, is much better than their offense. Their safeties aren't that great. Tayshawn Gibson, 84 overall. He's 28 years old. Definitely be moving him. Barry Church, probably be moving him as well. But this, you know, cornerback group is probably the best in football. At least the top two guys. Jalen Ramsey, AJ Bouye. Could easily both be number one corners on any other team, really. I mean, Jalen Ramsey... Top one, top two corner maybe. AJ Bouye is up there. He's, I don't think he's that high, but he's still very, very good. Is he at least? He's at least like top, I don't know, eight, seven, maybe even higher than that. He's a very good cornerback. DJ Hayden's not good. I don't even know who Patman is. So I'll probably trade for a different corner, or at least I'll, I'll probably draft one. I kind of like that route, to be honest. This D-line has a ton of depth on it. Glaius Campbell is a monster, but I think I'm going to move him. He's 32 years old, and regression hits like a truck in this game. So he will be like an 80, I don't know, 86 overall after this season, 87. I just don't like that. I don't think regression should hit that hard. But Clayus Campbell will most likely be moved because he's probably very expensive as well. Yannick Ngakwe will be here for the long haul. Malik Jackson, he's pretty expensive, but he's good. So I think I'll keep him. Marcel Darius or Darius. I've always said Darius. Correct me if you want. I really don't know if I'm going to keep him. Depends on this contract. I'm pretty sure he's expensive too because I kind of want to get Taven Bryan playing. And I'm pretty sure Taven Bryan fits a lot more as a defensive tackle in this kind of scheme. I mean, he has 76 speed. He could play on the edge. But he has 93 strength. I think I like him more as a defensive tackle. He's also 293 pounds. I want, like, a faster defensive end. Like, Dante Fowler is a great fit, but I'm going to be trading him. 
obviously nothing against Dante Fowler. Like, I want to make this move because it obviously happened in real life. But I want a player like him to play left end. Or a player like Yannick Ngakwe, you know, another athletic, relatively small defensive end. He's not really that small, but I mean, he fits it as a 4-3. You guys know what I'm talking about. They also have, like, Abry Jones, who I'll probably trade. But I really want Taven Bryan to start. So I think I'm going to have Malik Jackson and Taven Bryan as the defensive tackles. That means I'll move Marcel Darius and Abry Jones. I can probably stud out this defense even more. I mean, their linebacking core I didn't even get to. Telvin Smith, fantastic outside linebacker. Miles Jack, one of the best middles to have in a rebuild. I didn't know he had star development. That makes sense. He develops like crazy. Super athletic, good tackler, good acceleration. He's just a great middle linebacker to have, so I'm glad he's on the team. I need another outside linebacker. I think Jacobs, is this a rookie? He is a rookie out of Wisconsin. Leon Jacobs, 88 speed. What's up with the Jaguars getting such fast linebackers? All right, well, I will be making some trades here. So the trade for Dante Fowler works. This is, according to Adam Schefter, the specifics of the trade. I moved Dante Fowler up to left outside linebacker because I'm pretty sure that's where he's going to be playing for the Rams instead of a 3-4 defense. It doesn't make much sense as a defensive end. So I just did that for them so they don't have him playing defensive end because I don't think the Rams would move them, you know, move him on their own. So yeah, this is the trade. Dante Moncrief and Jeremy Parnell will get me the Cardinals first and fifth round draft picks. I'm giving the Falcons Calais Campbell, Marcel Darius, and Abry Jones for Keanu Neal. This is such a steal. I'm giving the Bills DJ Hayden and AJ Can for their first rounder. Tayshawn Gibson, Carlos Hyde, and Blair Brown gets me Frank Ragnow and his second round draft pick. Cody Davis and Corey Grant will get me the Redskins first round draft pick, and I'm gonna try to use this pick in this next trade. That is so close to going through. <laughs> I will make this work. I'm gonna try my best. This is a weird looking trade, but I'm pretty much just moving up to get the first overall pick, really. Well, the projected first overall pick. So I'm giving the Browns Rashad Green, Lorente McCray, I think is his name, and the 19th overall pick. I forgot which team that's from. I think that might be from the Cardinals. But I'm giving them all that for their first round draft pick. And now let's see if this will work. If this doesn't work, then I can't get um, David Bakhtiari. It worked. <laughs> I got David Bakhtiari for the Browns first round draft pick. This random defensive tackle they were really interested in. And Barry Church. Oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry, Packers fans, this is so bad. <laughs> I'm trading the Packers. Josh Wells? I feel like his name's Josh, I'm actually not entirely sure. He's a 71 overall. I'm also trading TJ Yeldon, which I didn't really want to do, but I mean, I'm getting back the Browns draft pick. So that means I pretty much got David Bakhtiari by trading the defensive tackle Barry Church and these two guys. <laughs> for you know david bakhtiari that is that is pretty absurd i really could not find anyone to trade for with these last two guys i want to trade so i'm giving the bills blake bortles and niles paul for their first and fourth round draft picks next year this is the team for the first season i tried to get a lot of players who fit this scheme i did change it from what it originally was i wanted to go with vertical power run i think west coast power run was what the jaguars normally have so i switched it up a little bit but i think this makes sense here because marquise lee and keelan cole both fit this scheme now leonard fournette still fits this fits the scheme cody kessler is now the starting quarterback i'm not really too bothered by that because i want to draft one i was trying to trade for like patrick mahomes or jared goff but they're both really difficult to trade for so I could not manage that. This offensive line, though, is fantastic now. David Bakhtiari, arguably the best left tackle in the NFL. There's a couple guys up there for sure. Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder are the same. Frank Ragnow is a young right guard who fits this game with quick development. He should be able to play well. I think he's actually a left guard. I just slid him over to right. And then Cam Robinson slid over to right tackle. Austin Safarian Jenkins is a solid tight end. And then on defense, we are actually a 100% scheme fit, even though not many of the starters fit this game, but it's okay. Yannick Ngakwe, Telvin Smith. I think your name's Leon Jacobs. Yeah, he fits the scheme. Uh, Ronnie Harrison fits the scheme as well. Quick development. Only a 70 overall, but maybe he could develop into something. That would be really cool if he can win, like, defensive rookie of the year, and then he can go up to, like, a 77, because then I'd probably keep him. Keanu Neal moved over to free safety. I feel like that makes sense a little bit, at least. I think it makes more sense for him to move over to free safety than Ronnie Harrison, because I'm pretty sure Keanu Neal actually has really good zone coverage. 85 zone, that's much better than what Harrison has, so I'm fine with having him at free safety. Jalen Ramsey, AJ Bouye, and Herndon will be the corners. Also, from my experience of rebuilds, I don't really think it matters too much. I feel like a safety can play either free or strong safety in Madden Sim and can do it just fine, so I'm not too worried about that. Taven Bryan is the number two defensive tackle. I think I might actually move him up to the number one, though, because I want him getting more snaps than Malik Jackson because he's probably on his way out. He's expensive, and he's old. 
<laughs> so he's definitely on his way out. Dwayne Smoot will be the left end. Obviously not a great replacement for Calais Campbell, but it's okay. Maybe I can try to draft one. And then the special teams, here's what this looks like if anyone cares. I'm actually going to throw D.D. Westbrook to the starting kick and punt returner. I want to see if maybe he can make a Pro Bowl. That would be pretty cool. And then here's the specialist. I have Ronnie Harrison actually playing the slot corner just so he gets a lot of playing time. Dwayne Smoot is the rush left end. Taven Bryan is going to be the rush defensive tackle. And Yannick Ngakwe will be the rush right end. I forgot what your stats looked like. Let me check one more time. 83 power move, 76 speed. Yeah, you can for sure rush. That's fine. Delvin Smith, sub linebacker. Keelan Cole, slot wide receiver. Leonard Fournette is the third down running back and the power halfback. And I also signed Char Kendrick West just to fill the backup running back void. So I think this team's actually pretty decent. If Cody Kessler can play, you know, well and not make many mistakes, I think this team can make it into the playoffs. We have a bye week at the midseason mark here. Let's see what the record is all about. We are 4-4, four and four, though. Not doing too bad, but playing, you know, a little bit under what I thought. Probably because Cody Kessler isn't doing too well, but it's all right. Six and two are the Texans, three and four are the Titans, and then the Colts are three and five. One experience point for a couple guys here on the offense. D.D. Westbrook does not have one. On the defensive side, we have one from a bunch of players, two from Miles Jack, though. No, none for Herndon. I almost said no for Herndon. Whatever. Let's bring back some players here. This is Josh Lambeau. Is that the first guy? It is Josh Lambeau. I will bring him back. James O'Shaughnessy. Might as well. I mean, he's a decent backup tight end. Why not? So let's go with Josh Lambeau. Let's we'll sign him to a pretty long extension just to get him back on the team. He's a good kicker, so why not? And then James O'Shaughnessy. He's probably not asking for too much. Yeah, I'll pay you that. Will I? I'll go 1.5. I'll pay you that. All right, the salary needs improvement. I'm not going to worry about him too much. He doesn't play, you know, all that much in this team. We actually ended up making the playoffs. This team went 11-5. and five. We have to take on the 9-6-1 Browns. We have their draft pick, so obviously they're not going to have the first draft pick. But the Texans 13-3, and three, I guess we're not going to have the first draft pick, at least from them. The Colts went 8-8, eight and eight, and the Titans went 7-9. and nine. So a pretty close division, I guess. You know, all the teams played decently. Bottom two guys are just pretty average, or bottom two teams. 2-2 two and two in the preseason. Beat the Giants to start out the season, just barely lost there to the Patriots by one possession. Lost to the Titans by three, won two in a row though. Lost to the Cowboys and the Texans. Beat the Eagles, Colts, Steelers, and Bills. Beating the Eagles and the Steelers is a good sign. We lost against the Colts though, that's not a good sign. But then we won the last four, so the second half of the season was very, very good. I think we only lost one game, and it was to the Colts, I think. All right, anyway, Cody Kessler, 3,444 yards, 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Really not too bad. Who did we trade Blake Bortles to? We traded him to the Bills, didn't we? How did he play? He probably played well, but I still don't regret trading him. Yeah, 4,600 yards, 33 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. I don't know why he plays so well in simulation. I still don't regret it, though. I want to draft a quarterback for sure. And I don't think Jaguars fans will be too mad at me for that one. 1,324 yards for Leonard Fournette with seven touchdowns. Two fumbles, though. Interesting. Jack Kendrick West gets two touchdowns as well. Receiving Keelan Cole goes over a thousand yards with 10 touchdowns. I'm telling you, he's a good wide receiver, he plays well in simulation. Marquise Lee got two touchdowns, but ASJ, I didn't even notice this 758 yards, nine touchdowns. Has the most catches on the team, too. Blocking, this should be pretty good, I think. Yeah, the offensive line is playing nicely. On the defense, 113 tackles from Miles Jack, 108 from Telvin Smith. Tackles for loss, we have 14 from Malik Jackson, 12 from Taven Bryan. Sack numbers, seven from Malik Jackson and Taven Bryan, six and a half for Yannick and Gakwe only. All right, interceptions. Three for Miles Jack and A.J. Bouye. Two for Gerard Wilson. Is he starting at strong safety? Looks like he is. Delvin Smith and Trey Herndon each got one interception as well. Jalen Ramsey didn't get one. He probably didn't get targeted much. Defensive touchdowns, we have none. Safety count, we have none. And blocked kicks, we have none. All right. We were 24th in the NFL on offense, though. That's not good. And we were 8th in the NFL on defense. We really just need a new quarterback, I think. And this team will be amazing. Tom Brady. Wins MVP. Makes sense. Sorry if you heard that. Somebody just closed the door outside. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Nobody from the Jags. Defensive Player of the Year, Navarro Bowman. Wow, that's pretty cool. Miles Jack, though, comes in second. Telvin Smith comes in eighth. Baker Mayfield wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't think I started an Offensive Rookie, so it's okay. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tremaine Edmonds. Ronnie Harrison comes in fourth. It'd be cool if he made a Pro Bowl or something. I highly doubt it, though. But still, we should get, you know, a decent number of experience points for some guys, I guess. On the offense, Cody Kessler is playing with confidence. I like it. I like it. Leonard Fournette has two experience points. Keelan Cole only got one. That's rough. D.D. Westbrook got two on the defense then. 
We have three from Miles Jack and Taven Bryan. That's nice. I want him to develop three from Ronnie Harrison. I'm really tempted to keep him at strong safety. I want to see how well he can play over the course of this rebuild. Uh, two for a couple other guys as well. This is what the team looks like heading into this playoff game. Honestly, everyone on the team, aside from Cody Kessler, is like really good. And I really don't have to do too much more, I don't think. But still, there are some pieces I guess I could try to fill. There's the offense, and then here is the defense. A really cool thing about this defense, though, is that Ronnie Harrison has star development. I hope he retains that this entire time. I really want him to go up like over an 80 at some point. That'd be really cool. But let's see how different our overall is from the Browns. I'm sure we have a higher overall team. Yeah, we do by three overall points, but the Browns still have some great players at, you know, key positions like Baker Mayfield usually plays really well. So let's advance to the week. Can we take down the Browns? Let's see. We did not. 23-17, to a one-possession game against the Browns, who rebound rebounded quite well. I did not mean to go to the draft stories. Let me show you that I didn't cheat. I mean, I don't know why I would cheat to lose, but, you know, you never, you never know. People... People are weird. They think some strange things, but we did lose 23-17, to 17, no force wins or anything. Looking at the Pro Bowl roster here for the first season, Tom Brady, Phillip Rivers, and Deshaun Watson lead it off. Melvin Gordon, Le'Veon Bell, and Kareem Hunt are here. James Devlin and Roosevelt Knicks are the fullbacks. Emmanuel Sanders is a first wide receiver. Danny Amendola, Jermaine Curse, DeAndre Hopkins, Julian Edelman, T.Y. Hilton. Amendola and Curse are not normally here. Gronk and Austin Safarian Jenkins, that's pretty cool that he made it, so did Hunter Henry. David Bakhtiari is a starting left tackle, that's nice. Trent Brown is the other one. Joel Batonio and Andrew Norwell, that's pretty cool to see Andrew Norwell in there. Ronnie Hudson and Brandon Linder, David DeCastro, Marshall Yonda, Mitchell Schwartz, and Marcus Gilbert. So we have a couple guys there from our our, our offensive line, makes sense because we have a really talented one. Cam Wake and Joey Bosa, Miles Garrett, Carl Lawson, Geno Atkins and Malik Jackson makes it, Maurice Hurst makes it too. Von Miller and TJ Watt, CJ Mosley, Ryan Shazier, Terrell Suggs, and Dante Hightower, Stephon Gilmore, Jonathan Joseph. I don't even know who this is, to be honest. Something more. I'm sorry, I don't know his first name. Denzel Ward is up to a 94 overall. It's unreal. TJ McDonald and Derwin James, Jabril Peppers, Andre Howell, Adam Venetieri, uh, Sam Cook, Jalen Richard, and Didi Westbrook. It's cool that Didi Westbrook made it. That was one of the strangest Super Bowls I've seen in the first year of simulation. The Panthers versus the Browns. The Panthers won 42-7 to as well. That's pretty interesting. We could bring back Charkandrick West, but I'm not going to worry about it. I think I might just draft a running back in the late rounds. I don't really think I care about anyone here. So let's go into free agency. Let's see if anyone new is here. I'm not sure who, like, really could be new that's, like, a crazy superstar. I think Khalil Mack might be, but I don't know if they actually... I didn't, I'm pretty sure the Bears signed him to a long-term deal. I think. I could be very wrong. So I don't think he would be in free agency. I don't know. Let's see. Who is going to be here? William Hayes is the top player. Trevor Williams would be kind of nice, but I don't really need him. Tyler Davison would be a decent defensive tackle. He's pretty talented as well, but I might be looking to draft one and then trade Malik Jackson because he's kind of old. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go after anyone here, but I will see you guys in the draft. I'm trading up here with the Giants. I actually have really bad draft picks. My earliest draft pick is at number 13. So I might have to trade up a couple times. But here I'm giving them the 31st overall pick, Payne and Smoot for the second overall pick. And I think here I'm going to be drafting an outside linebacker who I'm going to convert down to defensive end. It's going to be Harris Lockhart, right? So he doesn't have a great combine. Ooh, do I really want to do this then? He does not have a good combine, but he has good looking top three skills. I still think he could do well at defensive end, so I still might go for it, but there's a good-looking defensive tackle as well. Let me rethink this, and I'll be right back. I don't really think I have too much confidence in Harris Lockhart being that good, so I'm going with a cornerback, Kevin Bowers. He is most likely going to be our new slot corner. Doesn't have a good 40-yard dash, but if you ignore that, he has a great combine. I mean, he's a 7.8 grade. He's, he's very slow. Everything else is really, really good, though. I think this guy is going to be tremendous. 77 overall, quick development. Yeah, he is not tremendous. 86 speed is very slow. Good jumping, I guess. Decent man, great press coverage. I think he still is a good slot corner, so he will play there. But that was not a good draft pick. I'm probably going to have to trade up again, though. I didn't really want to do this. I didn't really want to trade Cam Robinson, but I think it's going to work out in the end. I might even be able to trade for him back, to be honest, because... I doubt he has that much value, being a 74 overall, but I'm giving the Broncos a 29th overall pick and Cam Robinson to get the third overall pick. And with this one, I will be selecting a defensive tackle. So I think my plan might be to select this guy and then maybe trade for like, 
another defensive, I mean, not another defensive player, a right tackle with Malik Jackson. I think that's going to be the plan. I still kind of want Lockhart. If he's there at number 13, I will take him, but I don't want to take him in the early first. I think this guy is going to be very, very good though. 81 overall quick development. There we go. Ranked exactly where we took him. Six foot seven. He's huge. 92 strength, 84 block shed. This guy should be able to replace Malik Jackson very well. I'm going to go with Conrad Boyle here. He's a wide receiver, and we're pretty deep at wide receiver, but I still think this guy could play pretty well. If he's good enough, I will start him, but he has good catch in traffic, good catching, and good short route running. Maybe he can play in the slot, and then Keelan Cole can play at the number one. He's really slow, though, and he's not that athletic. You know, he's not that agile, can't accelerate too well, but still, I think he's going to be pretty good. He also had a pretty good draft story about him. That wasn't a terrible pick. I mean, he was ranked seven spots after we took him, but still, 78 overall, normal development really isn't good. I think I was just... So caught up in the draft story. I thought that meant he was going to have at least a decent development trait, but that really wasn't that great of a pick there. So we still need a quarterback, but there is not a good quarterback really in this class. Braden Herndon looks decent, but all of these guys have like B plus throw power. And, you know, there's a couple guys with A throw power, like Parker Lou, but he's not going to be that good. Austin Buquette, Buquette. He's not going to be good. There's this guy late who looks okay. This guy looks okay. This is a really, really poor quarterback class. I still kind of want to go with Braden Herndon, but there's also an outside linebacker who looks decent. So let me see if he's still here. He is still here. Monta Barnes. Supposed to go in the second round, but then I guess fully scouted, he's supposed to go in the late first round. That's exactly where we are. Harris Curry is supposed to go in the second round too. He's supposed to be a late second rounder, and we have the 18th pick in the second round. I think I'm willing to take that risk and go with Barnes. He's definitely more of a position of need as well, so let's select him. 77 overall, normal development. Yeah, that's totally a reach. We took him one pick higher, but he's still pretty good, and I think he will get some playing time. He's not too fast, doesn't have great zone coverage, but still, 87 block shed. Kind of random, but I think he'll play. Braden Herndon is still here. But so is this guy, Harris Curry. Those are two different players. I didn't even realize that. Harris Curry is a late second round prospect. B plus throw power, B plus throw accuracy, short B throw on the run. I'm pretty sure Herndon is just better than this guy in like every category. Yeah, he is. And he's supposed to be a mid first rounder. I'm going to go with Herndon. I think he's actually going to be pretty decent. 76 with quick. You're really a 76 overall. Yikes. This draft class looked pretty decent on paper, but it's just not panning out. I still might take a shot at a couple of quarterbacks later, just to see if I can get a really good one. I'm going to go with a backup running back here, Kevon Boone. Looks pretty decent. He was supposed to go in the first round, and he's decently fast with great, uh, with a great three cone and a great 20-yard shuttle. I think he's actually going to be pretty good. 78 overall with star development. There we go. That was a great draft pick. 88 speed. 92 acceleration and agility, 75 catching. This guy's going to be the third down running back for sure. Oh, that's frustrating. I had some middle linebackers who were supposed to go in the fourth round on my draft board, and they all got scouted. Not scouted. They all got uh, selected already. I really don't think this Austin guy is going to be anything special. I'm taking him off the draft board. So I guess out of these guys, I think Dequarius Hagler is going to be the best, but I can probably wait. When are you supposed to go? Late fifth, yeah, he's supposed to be a late fifth rounder. And I have two third round draft picks. Might as well at least trade one of them away. I might trade them both away to be fair. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll trade both of them away. And I'll see what that uh, defensive end is all about then. I am now able to take Dequarius Hagler. I just traded away both my third round draft picks. So let's go with him. He actually looks pretty decent. Maybe he can start. I'm not really sure. I'll select him though. 74 overall, quick development. That was actually a really good draft pick. He doesn't have any stat that's like amazing. I mean, 84 block shed is pretty good. But uh, everything else is pretty average. He's not a bad defensive end at all. Both of the quarterbacks went. They were supposed to go in the late fifth round. Players select... I mean, teams select players super, super early in, uh, in Madden 19. I might just go with Austin Bequette just in case. He's going to be terrible, though. I'll do it. 72 with normal. Apparently, that was a good draft pick. I don't really see it. Good throw power, but that's pretty much it. I guess I'll give the 76 overall guy a shot and see what he can do. I'm just going to advance to the end of the draft. I'll let you know if the computer drafted me anyone who, you know, is pretty crazy. This is what the top of the draft looks like. Dylan Stevens. This guy looked really good. That's actually not even the guy I was thinking of. This guy does look very good, but there was another safety who I was thinking of and wow, this guy's really well-rounded. Where is another safety? I think it might be Freddie Briggs. Yeah, this is the guy who I was thinking of. This guy would probably make a pretty good corner. 
Yeah, he would. 82, no, 83 man coverage, 76 zone coverage. Maybe I should have went with him. I don't know. But our team really didn't draft too well. I mean, we did get Sherrod Buchanan, who is the third best player in the draft. So that's not a bad draft pick at all. Glenn Coe looks really good. He's kind of old, though. He was 24 years old. 85 speed, though, and acceleration and finesse moves. Good looking defensive end. Also, our team really didn't draft anyone that great. But yeah, this, uh, this draft wasn't too good. Honestly, I th I've seen much better. So apparently, Cam Robinson has a ton of value because I cannot trade for him. Malik Jackson for Cam Robinson only filled it up like a third of the way. But somehow, I can trade Malik Jackson and a fifth round draft pick for David DeCastro. So I'm going to do that and then probably slide DeCastro to right tackle. This team is for sure better than the team was last year. So we should make it back to the playoffs, but... You never know with Madden Simulation. We have Herndon now starting at quarterback. He's really not that great. But I will start him, and maybe he can win Offensive Rookie of the Year. I also want to try to buy the quarterback upgrade. I need like 2,000 more experience to do so, so I'm not going to spend my coach XP yet. Also, David DeCastro now is starting at right tackle, and this offensive line is just nutty. <laughs> on the defensive side, we don't have a great pass rusher on the left side, but still Hagler is a rookie, so he still has some potential with quick development, and he's really not that bad. Like, he has some pretty decent stats there, I guess. Block Shed is the highlight of his stats. We have a good defensive tackle core. Young guys there. Yannick Ngakwe is still a stud. Still probably the best cornerback core in the NFL. Keanu Neal is a fantastic free safety. Ronnie Harrison played well last season and has star development, so I have high hopes for him, to be honest. His linebacking core is still pretty good, but now with Barnes playing left out, fits the scheme there. I think he can play pretty well. I just have to mess with the specialist then. All right, so I think Boone is our backup running back. I'm fine with him starting there so the specialist dd westbrook could play slot wide out i don't know if i want to get boyle playing i think i do i think i want conrad boyle to play in the slot because he is a rookie and he has some pretty decent potential i could also i don't know what i want to do i want keelan cole to be the number one i know that much he played well out of the slot last season but i think he can play well you know as the number one too dd westbrook could be a decent slot look though yeah, he'd actually be a really, really good slot look, and I don't really like Boyle all that much, so I will put D.D. Westbrook there and see what he can do out of the slot. I'm good with Bowers as a slot corner. I need to change this. The rush right end has to be different, but I think everything else is correct. We are 4-3 and three right now at the midseason mark, and I still can't buy the quarterback upgrade. The Chargers are 6-1, so I'm pretty sure we're going to lose this one. We are on top of the division, though. The Titans 4-4, four and four, Texans 4-4, four and four, and the Colts 2-5. and five. Not many experience points going around. I really want this quarterback to turn into something. I'm not really sure if he's going to, though. We have more on the defense for sure. Two for Ronnie Harrison. That's nice. C continue that. I want him to get over an 80 this season. That would be pretty awesome. Jalen Ramsey has to come back to the team. I think Miles Jack does too, then. Yikes. This is going to be a bad group of guys to bring back. Keanu Neal, Yannick Ngakwe, Miles Jack, Keelan Cole, Austin Safarian Jenkins, and of course, Jalen Ramsey. We have $86 million. Okay, we can get this done. This will be unlike the Jaguars in normal simulation, where they usually let go of Yannick, not Yannick Ngakwe. Actually, yeah, he's pretty uh, frequent in free agency, but I mean, I meant to say Miles Jack. Miles Jack is always in free agency. Shout out to BMG, by the way. <laughs> um, but let's bring back Yannick Ngakwe. He's coming back to the team. The other two guys re-signed with us as well. Miles Jack, star development, of course, 88 overall. He's a very good middle linebacker, one of the best middle linebackers to get in a rebuild. Keelan Cole has star development too. 26 years old. He's a bit old, but it's okay. He's very good. He normally plays really well. And then ASJ, he's been good. I think he made the Pro Bowl last season for us, so why not bring him back? I guess Malik Jackson made the Pro Bowl for us too, and I didn't, you know, keep him. I did trade him, but different different age situation and price situation. But anyway, those are all the guys I'm going to bring back. I'm still going to wait for the quarterback upgrade, so I'm not going to spend my, court, my uh, coach experience yet. We made the playoffs once again. I think we had the same record, 11-5. The um, Ravens also went 11-5. We won the division, though, 9-7 for the Texans, 7-9 for the Colts and the Titans. All right, so let's check out the playoff schedule. Not the playoff schedule, the team schedule. I always say that. 3-1 in the preseason. Lost the opening game to the Broncos. Beat the Steelers. Lost to the Bills. We actually lost to the Bills. Oh, they have Blake Bortles on their team. How did he do? Why is he so glitchy in simulation? 302 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. Our quarterback kept up with him a little, but still, geez, Blake Bortles. Why does he go off so much? I probably should have kept him, but I really didn't want to. 
Uh, the Colts, we did beat them. We lost to the Texans. It beat the Titans, Raiders, Chargers, Falcons, Texans, Panthers, Saints. That's a huge win streak. Lost to the Colts and the Chiefs, but then won the last two. So again, the second half of this season has been pretty, pretty phenomenal for us. Blake Bortles wins MVP. Are you kidding me? I figured this was going to happen, but still, he just goes off. But holy crap. Braden Herndon, three interceptions in one season with 34 touchdowns. Under 4,000 yards, but still, those numbers are insane. Let me check out Blake Bortles. I need to know what he does. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 5,190 yards. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Blake Bortles. Apparently throws for 5,000 yards all the time. That's not the right team. That's Sam Darnold. There's his season, if anyone cares. <laughs> We're the team above that. All right, well, anyway, Braden Herndon playing very, very well. That should be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Leonard Fournette, a great season. 5.8 yards a carry, 1,282 yards, 11 touchdowns. The offensive line must have blocked for him super, super well. Boone got six touchdowns as well. Keelan Cole, nearly 1,000 yards, 944 with eight touchdowns. Seven for ASJ, Marquise Lee, and Dede Westbrook. Westbrook played very well out of the slot. Kevon Boone got two touchdowns. Leonard Fournette did as well. Any sacks let up? Of course there are. That's a lot for David Bakhtiari, but still, I mean, I guess he's playing all right. David Castro, 11, really not ideal either. On the defense, 132 tackles from Miles Jack. That's a lot. 103 from Telvin Smith. 15 tackles for loss for Yannick Ngakwe. 12 for Taven Bryan and Sherrod Buchanan. And then 10 from Dequarius Hagler. Looks like he had a pretty good rookie season. Nine and a half sacks for Yannick Ngakwe. Three interceptions from Kevin Bowers, nice. Three from Keanu Neal, two from Miles Jack, one from Jalen Ramsey, Ronnie Harrison, Trey Herndon, and A.J. Bouye. How many tackles did Harrison have? 81 tackles, six for loss, and an interception. That's a pretty good season. We have at least one safety. Let me check out touchdowns first, though. We have no touchdowns. We have one safety from Yannick Ngakwe. Any blocked kicks? We have one from Keith Kelsey? I don't even know who that is. Anyway, 10th in the NFL on offense. On the defense, probably top 10. 25th, yeah, okay, never mind. Bottom 10, I guess. Yeah, Blake Bortles wins MVP. You gotta love seeing that. Our quarterback should be in this list. Okay, he comes in there at number 9. Do not see a rookie above him. Good sign. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Blake Bortles. Our guy comes in 5th. Again, no rookie above him. I don't think there was a rookie on this list. And the Dolphins tied twice. Alright, Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Jack. Nobody from the Jaguars. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to our quarterback. And I do have the quarterback upgrade, so let's see how much of an impact that makes. Kevon Boone comes in 3rd. Nobody else from our team. Defensive Rookie of the Year actually goes to Kevin Bowers. Our corner. That's nice. Dylan Stevens, 86 overall. Wow, I forgot what position this guy is, but I, I remember him being pretty good. And then we have Sherrod Buchanan in there at number 9. Surprised our defensive end didn't make it. He had a pretty decent year, but he didn't get that many sacks. And Madden prioritizes sacks a lot. Just weights them very heavily. Yeah, okay. Our quarterback got two experience points. He was Offensive Rookie of the Year. He only got 7,000 experience for that. Oh, that's such a shame. I don't know why. Players just randomly get like six experience points for no reason. And then when players actually win stuff and have great seasons, they only get like two. I also have the upgrade. I wasted so many points on that. It's all right. Whatever. He still has two. I guess that's a decent takeaway. On the defense, we have four for Miles Jack, four for Keanu Neal, and four from Ronnie Harrison. I'm liking that Harrison is developing. That's actually really cool. How many does Bowers have? He has four. I'm not sure how Bowers has more. I, I just... Don't really get that. More than the quarterback, that is. He had a great season, I understand, but still earned it. One offensive rookie of the year. I'm just used to getting like 50,000 experience for that in Madden uh, in Madden 18. But anyway, let me spend this quick. The team is now an 88 overall, 93 on offense, 91 on defense. They played very well throughout this season. Keelan Cole's up to an 86 overall. Cool to see. Somehow went down in development, even though he had a really good season. I don't understand how development works in this game, but... It's whatever. It happens. Leonard Fournette up to a 94 overall with confidence. Quick development. I feel like he had star at the start of this, and he has had two good seasons. Again, development doesn't really make too much sense, but it's okay. This one makes the least amount of sense to me out of all of them. Keanu Neal. Yeah, down to normal development. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But on the bright side, Miles Jack went up in development to superstar, so that's cool. Ronnie Harrison still has star development. I think he might go on the thumbnail. Depending on this next season, to be honest, if he has a really bad season, maybe he won't. But still, I think he's developed enough to go on the thumbnail. Usually I gauge, you know, who to put on the thumbnail based on how well they developed and like how different their overall is at the end compared to the beginning. But this team is actually coming along very nicely. We really just need another left end. I mean, Hagley didn't play badly, but I want someone who can put up more sack numbers or better sack numbers, I guess. And then the offense is honestly fine. I'm really okay with it. We should have a higher overall team than the Ravens, and I feel like we could win this one. 
Depends on who the quarterback is, to be honest. It's probably Lamar Jackson, but we're in 88, they're in 84. We can definitely win this one, but we will probably lose considering we have the overall advantage. It's just kind of how these go. Let's see, did we win? No, of course we didn't. 28 to 17. A decently close game, but man, still a two possession game. We lost by 11. Let's see. I, I kind of want to check out uh, who the quarterback was. It was probably Lamar Jackson. That was actually Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco beat us. Our quarterback went off. How did he have under 100? Oh, his completion percentage was probably really bad. Yeah, his completion percentage was terrible, but geez. He had so many yards. Who received well? Kevon Boone, our backup running back, had 78 yards. Keelan Cole had a good game. Well, he needed two touchdowns. ASJ. All right. Well, that sucks that we didn't win that one. There is some good news, though. I remembered to check the Pro Bowl roster for two straight seasons. Yeah, Blake Bortles. The first quarterback, Phillip Rivers and Baker Mayfield are there. Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, Kareem Hunt, Patrick Ricard, James Devlin, Keenan Allen, Torrey Smith. All right, DeAndre Hopkins, Emmanuel Sanders, and Zay Jones. Kelvin Benjamin, too. Jeez, Blake Bortles is just making the Bills right now. Gronk, Charles Clay, and Austin Safarian Jenkins. Charles Clay makes it, too. The Bills are just unstoppable. David Bakhtiari and Ronnie Stanley, Joel Batonio, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder, Ronnie Hudson, Marshall Yonda, Kevin Zeitler, David DeCastro, Marcus Gilbert, I think everyone from our offensive line made it aside from Frank Ragnow, but that's okay. Trent Murphy and Joey Bosa are here. Jerry Hughes and Miles Garrett. Corey Legit, Geno Atkins, and Larry Ogunjobi. Von Miller, TJ Watts are here. Avery Williamson and Wesley Woodard. Vontez Perfect and Lockhart. Oh, that was the guy I kind of wanted to draft. He's an 85 overall. Maybe he was the correct selection. I just didn't really see him being that good. His combine was so bad. Minka Fitzpatrick, Mike Hilton, uh, Marlon Humphrey, and Terrence Mitchell. That's new. Keanu Neal, yeah, he's the first free safety here, but still went down in development. I don't get it. Demarius Randall is here too, Jamal Adams, Andre Hal, Justin Tucker, Doman, a rookie punter, and then we got Boone from our team and Scott who make it as well. This Super Bowl from this past season is a lot more normal than the first Super Bowl. It's the Chargers and the Saints, and the, the Chargers ended up winning. So let's go into free agency. Who is going to be here? Hopefully a good pass rusher. Usually I like to sign Yannick Ngakwe here, but he's already on the team, so $39.88 million to spend. We can definitely bring in some studs. Who is here? Drew Brees is the top player. Emmanuel Sanders, Derek Henry, Austin Eckler, Shaq Thompson isn't bad, but I'm not going to go after him. I kind of like Barnes. I don't think the left out plays all that much, so I don't think it's worth paying one that much. Vic Beasley could be an upgrade at defensive end. I don't know. I don't think he's that big of a difference between... It actually is a pretty big difference. It's seven overall points. He's 28 years old, though. That doesn't really matter. I think I might just try to draft one. I think I'm going to go that route. Let me see. Let me see if I can just really lowball Vic Beasley, even though he's getting offers. I don't want to offer him that much money. That's exactly 93 points. I'm going to actually lower it a little bit. Let's see how badly he wants to come to the team. 83. All right, that's significantly less than what they're offering. But still, if he accepts, that would be cool. I'll take it. But if not, I might try to just... Uh, draft one. We were rejected by uh, Vic Beasley. Not really that big of a deal though. I didn't really want him all that much. That's why I didn't offer him too much money. I'm giving the 49ers a 29th overall pick. One of my third round draft picks and the quarterback we drafted last season. You know, the, the backup quarterback we drafted last season for the first overall pick in this draft. It's way too easy to trade up to the first overall pick. I didn't really want to do this, but I think they were going to take the player I want. And this time I'm actually going to be drafting an outside linebacker who I will convert down to uh, defensive end. I also just want to show this just in case I don't get a chance to. Bradford Huber looks amazing. This is one of the best guards I have ever seen in a draft. He's a 7.0 combine grade, but we really don't need a guard. So I will be selecting Vincent something, Vincent Evans, this guy here. He looks really good actually. He's pretty slow, but that's not bad for a defensive end really. Six foot five, 244. He's kind of skinny, but I still think he can get the job done. He's very strong. And he has a good three cone with good top three skills. Let's go with him. 80 overall with star development. That is awesome. He's a good power wrestler as well. 77 speed. That can definitely get the job done, you know, on the defensive line. 88 acceleration. 76 zone coverage. Ooh, he has really bad block shed though. I still think I'm going to slide him down. He could probably like stay at right outside linebacker and play okay. But I definitely still think I'm going to slide him down. I think I might be drafting another linebacker then i'm gonna have to trade up again i'm gonna try to trade up with the buccaneers once again i'm trading up in this draft class giving the buccaneers a 23rd overall pick sherman who the computer drafted for me last year and another third round draft pick for the eighth overall pick hopefully this linebacker is here he's a middle linebacker and this guy looks really good i'll probably just slide him outside if he's still here 
Hopefully. Ah, that might be him. I don't think it is. That's definitely not him. That probably means he went then. Is he still here? Yeah, he went. Oh, that guy looks so good. He had a 7.4 combine grade. That guy looks good too, but let me see. There's still an 8.0 combine grade corner. I'm not going to select him because I really don't need another cornerback. I'm not going to go the quarterback either. I like the way our guy played. Uh, let me see. I'm not really sure who I want. Is this guard still here? I'll take him. How he went too. <laughs> Could go the center. I don't need a center. My offensive line is so good. I don't really need anyone here. This defensive tackle looks pretty unreal. I don't think he'll play much though. That's the only issue. I don't really want to take him then. I could just go with this middle linebacker then just to be safe and make sure I get him. He's really slow though. Jeez. Okay, well this is awkward. I don't really know how to go with. I could go with DJ Pryor. Let's just go with him. 78 overall, quick development. That's not that bad of a draft pick. We took him eight picks earlier earlier than he was supposed to go. I think he still might play though. Uh, I actually really don't know. I mean, the, the left outside linebacker position, I know that guy's a right, but I would move him over. The left outside linebacker position really doesn't play too much, so I don't need anyone that tremendous over there. But I think this might be the last pick I make. If this guy is still here, he probably got selected. There's some first round quarterback still. Are you serious? This wide receiver did get selected. Man, he was supposed to go in the third round. And he had a really, he had like a spec catch or something. I was definitely going to snag him if he was still there. It's all right. I'll take a quarterback. Ah, should I? I'm indecisive in this draft, but like, oh, this guy's 4-3-6 speed. Nah, I'm just going to go with him. I don't want to take a quarterback. I don't want to have a controversy. 74 overall, 95 speed though. Wow, he's good. He's not going to play. Maybe like a kick returner or something, but our backup running back actually was a really good kick and punt returner. So I'm going to sim to the end of the draft here and I'll let you know who the best player was. Also, I meant to select this guy, but I put him on my watch board so the computer did select him for me. Barry Swan, 91 lead block fullback. Why not, right? So let's check out the rest of the draft class. Let's see who the number one player was. It was probably that corner who had like an 8.0 combine grade. It's actually going to be Gordon Richardson, a left tackle. This guy did look really good though. And he has star development, six foot eight with 94 strength. Good Lord. I need this guy in my Jets franchise like really badly. Frederick Martin looks pretty good. Jeffrey Weber, this was the middle linebacker I wanted. I'm almost certain. Yes, this was the middle linebacker I wanted. He had A-minus tackling. Oh, geez, this guy is really, really good. I wish I could have went after him. But where is... Um, there's the corner. 97 speed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hold on. 97 speed, 85 press, 81 man. Jeez. Bradford Huber. This is the guy I was looking for. This guard. How good is he? Yeah, he's a really good looking guard. Man, I want to see if I can find that wide receiver I wanted to take. Is this him? Yeah, the Eldon Doyle. I think this is him. Does he have a spec catch? Yes, this is the guy I was I, I wanted to take in the third round. That's when he was supposed to go. When did he actually go? In the second round. Oh, that sucks. Well, anyway, our draft really wasn't anything special. But I think we still got some decent pieces. Like Vincent Evans, good looking outside linebacker. He'll probably play. The offensive scheme fit really isn't there anymore. But a lot of the starters still fit the scheme. So I'm okay with it. Leonard Fournette, Keelan Cole, Swan now does. Marquise Lee. ASJ, David DeCastro, Frank Ragnow, David Bakhtiari. A lot of players who are starting fit this scheme, so I'm actually okay with keeping it, even though it's a 69%. This is what the offense looks like. The team is a 91 overall, 95 on both the offense and the defense. I'm actually going to be signing a backup tight end. I think I forgot to do this last year. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, but I still kind of want to sign someone. Sean Lee's a free agent. Interesting. Let's go with uh, Seth DeValve. Yeah, why not? Do you fit the scheme? You do actually fit the scheme. So I think that might bump up the percentage to like 70 something, 72 maybe. Let's see. What's the percentage now? 70. Exactly. All right. Well, that's fine. And then on the defensive side, uh, we have Barnes playing left outs. I was going to throw the rookie prior there, but I just moved him to back up middle linebacker. I think that's fine. Barnes, you know, we drafted him last year. He fits the scheme. I'm okay with it. Harrison doesn't fit the scheme. Oh, he's one away. I had him fitting the scheme at some point. I don't know how that switched. Keanu Neal also doesn't. I thought I had him fitting the scheme too. I think I, I said like scheme right there with a list, my bad. 93 overall zone though. All right, well, it's still an 84% scheme fit, so I'm okay with it. We have Evans playing at left end. He's an 81 overall. Even though he has really bad block shed, I still think he can play really well down here. His block shed can go up pretty easily. I've seen packages that upgrade it like three, you know, at a time. So I'm okay with the defense and everything. Here's a look at the specialist. It should be right 
Yannick Ngakwe, rush left end. Evans, rush right end. That's fine. Taven Bryan, slow rushing defensive tackle. Bowers, slot corner. Dede Westbrook, slot wide receiver. I think everything is good. Now, Miles Jack, though, is the sub linebacker, which is nice. I'll go to the midseason mark and I'll, you know, catch you guys up there. At the midseason mark, we are two and five. Really? Five and three from the Bears. How is this team playing so badly? I'm gonna switch it to spread, I think, for the rest of the for the rest of the season. That's usually what I do whenever the team starts playing badly. I just look at the specialist side. We have two experience points for Evans. That's pretty cool. This team's a 91 overall, and they're two and five. Let's see. Let's see what happens if we switch it from vertical power run to spread. What's this scheme fit, first off? If it's better, I'll probably go with this the no, it's not better. It's 54 percent Wow, there's no good scheme fit. Vertical power run is the best one. This team, like, was really good at fitting this scheme earlier. I don't know what happened. Whatever. I'll stick with it. Maybe this is just a weird fluke season. I think this team is the best yet. I'm pretty sure it's it's really non-negotiable that this team is the best one we've had yet. On um, the defense, though, we have some experience points for, for some guys here. David Bakhtiari has to come back to the team. That sucks because he's not making much right now, and now he's about to be making a ton because he's a 98 overall left tackle. Leonard Fournette, D.D. Westbrook are the only other guys I want to bring back. Chad Hansen, I don't really need him. David Bakhtiari, star development. I'm pretty sure he had superstar. Actually, no, I think he did only have star. Uh, he's coming back to the team. That's fine. I like how I said only had star. Star is a great development trait to have. Leonard Fournette, let's bring him back. He is coming back to the team. There we go. And then D.D. Westbrook, he has quick development too. I don't think him and Leonard Fournette should have the same development trait. I don't know. That's just me. I feel like, I think Leonard Fournette had star at one point and he went down. So, D.D. Westbrook is coming back to the team, too. We got all the guys we want. So, of course, this team did not end up making the playoffs. I don't really know how this year happened. 7-9. and nine. This was a great year to make the playoffs, too. 9-7 and seven from the Texans on the Titans, 6-10 and ten from the Colts. I feel like as your teams get better, your chances of making the playoffs get slimmer. That's what it seems like in Madden Sim for some reason. 1-3 and three in the preseason. Lost the opening four games. That's not a good way to start a season. 1-2 then. Lost one, beat the Bears, lost two, beat the Browns and the Colts, lost two, and then uh, won the last two. So, I mean, the second half of the season was better once again, but really, the first half of the season was terrible. Did our quarterback really just play that badly? I hope that's not the case. Yeah, he didn't play well. 3,600 yards, 26 touchdowns, 19 interceptions. What happened? Last year, you threw three interceptions, and you come back with 19. Leonard Fournette had another good season, though. Over 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. No one really got that close to 1,000 yards. Keelan Cole has been the best receiver on this team. I don't know what happened this year. This is a weird season. Sack numbers. Yeah, what? David Bakhtiari let up 19 sacks. Are you kidding me? 12 for Andrew Norwell. The thing is, David Bakhtiari probably still made the Pro Bowl somehow. Tackles 139 for Miles Jack, 109 from Telvin Smith. 15 tackles for loss for Yannick Ngakwe and Taven Bryan. 12 from Sherrod Buchanan and 10 from Vincent Evans. Good season from Evans, though. He had 8 sacks. Yannick Ngakwe had 10. Seven and a half, though, from Buchanan. Six interceptions from Miles Jack, and then four from Telvin Smith. Jeez. Two from Keanu Neal, Kevin Bowers, and Jalen Ramsey. One from Vincent Evans, AJ Bouye, and Ronnie Harrison. Vincent Evans got a pick. Nice. He had a really good season. I hope that's Defensive Rookie of the Year. We have a touchdown from Miles Jack and Jalen Ramsey. Any safeties? We have one from Yannick Ngakwe. Any blocked kicks? We have one from DJ Pryor and Rashawn Dillard. I don't even know who that is. All right, but anyway, we were almost last on offense. Our quarterback just has to get better. I don't really know what else more to say. And then we were almost last on defense. Our defense just has to get better. I don't I don't really think it can, to be honest. Zeke wins MVP. Nobody from the Jags in this. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Deshaun Watson. Um, I don't think I saw any Jaguars players. Yeah, I didn't. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. Miles Jack should have won that. How did he not? I mean, Miles Jack, or Miles Garrett, my bad, could have probably had like 30 sacks, though. I can honestly see that. Telvin Smith comes in fifth, though. Nobody else on our team. Offensive rookie of the year. Uh, Sean Francis comes in eighth. I don't know who that is. Defensive rookie of the year. Vincent Evans comes in third. Bennett Roper and CJ Manning are above him. That's rough. That's rough. But it's all right. It happens. Let me show you guys the experience points quick. How many do we have? Wow. Okay, we only have four on offense. Actually, six on offense. That's depressing. On the defensive side, though, Vincent Evans got four. Ronnie Harrison gets three. He's going to go over an 80. That's what I like to see. Three from Yannick Ngakwe, two from Bowers. This defense is progressing really well, but the team just isn't playing too well right now. Let me go to uh, to the Pro Bowl, and I'll let you know who made it. Headlighting the Pro Bowl is Newberry. Okay, I don't know who that is. I think he's the Patriots quarterback at this point. Phillip Rivers and Deshaun Watson are here. Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, Kareem Hunt. I feel like this has been the same the whole time. Anthony Sherman, Patrick Ricard, 
Uh, Jarvis Landry, Albert Wilson, Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Jordan Matthews, and Josh Doxson. All right. Gronk, Nick Boyle, and Bojasic. I don't know how to pronounce that. Are the tight ends. David Bakhtiari, like I said, is the first left tackle, but he led up 19 sacks. What? Taylor Lewan is here too. Joel Petonio, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder, Ronnie Hudson, Shaq Mason, Kevin Zeitler, David DeCastro, Jack Conklin. We have a great offensive line. They always make it into the Pro Bowl. J.J. Watt and Joey Bosa, Miles Garrett and Yannick Ngakwe, Geno Atkins, Larry Ogunjobi, and Malik Collins, Von Miller and Matt Milano, Avery Williamson, Preston Brown, Vontez Burfick, Justin Houston, Kendall Fuller, Mike Hilton, Jonathan Jones, and Logan Ryan. Kevin Bayard and Keanu Neal make it. Keanu, nope, I almost said Keanu Vaccaro. Yeah, Kenny Vaccaro and Andre Hal are in here. Justin Tucker and Hand make it another rookie punter, it looks like. Or maybe, could have been a rookie last year. Then D.D. Westbrook and Scott make it for kick and punt returner. We only have $16 million here to spend, but still I could bring in some players. I don't even really know what I need. Let's see. Christian McCaffrey's probably the first one. Keenan Allen. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I'll go after a Keenan Allen. <laughs> Let's get him on the team. 97 total points. I will up that for sure. Christian McCaffrey, Tariq Cohen, Evan Ingram. Yeah, we don't need a tight end. ASJ is still pretty good. I think the only player I really want is Keenan Allen. So I'm going to spend as much money as possible on him because this is going to be the last season. We got Keenan Allen. There we go. That makes this wide receiver core so much better, even though it was already very good. Keelan Cole is going to slide into the slot. Keenan Allen and DD Westbrook will be here then. Insane wide receiver core. Marquise Lee is honestly still here too. I'm not going to trade anyone into this next season. I'm not even going to show the draft. I'll just sim to the next year where I think this team should be able to easily make it into the playoffs. I'm going to attempt to show you that scheme fit doesn't matter too much if you're running spread. Honestly, I think spread is just like immune to percent scheme fit. I'm going to run it this season, even though it's only a 58%. I almost guarantee we'll play better than we did last season. But here's the team. This team is really good. 93 overall. Keenan Allen is the newest acquisition to this wide receiver core. I skipped entirely through the draft, so I have no idea who the team drafted. Eh, we got a six foot seven tight end. He's not very good, but uh, all right, I'll, I'll take it, I guess. And on the defense, and then we drafted a corner. Yeah, this guy, who's this? Dion Marsh, 79 overall, quick development. 98 agility, holy crap. Hey, he's pretty good. He's not going to play. I like Bowers. I think he plays very well. But yeah, the team is really good. Evans is up to an 85 overall. Yannick Ngakwe, 94. Jalen Ramsey, 99, of course. Ronnie Harrison, 81. Probably went down in development. Yeah, okay. He did somehow. Even though he had a good season last year. And it's so random. Keanu Neal, 97 overall. This team is great. They can definitely make the playoffs. And hopefully, I will see you there. We made the playoffs going 10 and 6. I, this team should be doing so much better. I don't know. Maybe the percent scheme fit really does matter. Who knows? 11 and 5 though from the Texans, 7 to 9 for the Colts, 5 and 11 from the Titans. But it, I mean, I did tell you that we would play better if we changed the offensive scheme. I don't like doing that. I usually like kind of rocking with different schemes. But whatever. 2 and 2 in the preseason. Won the opening three games. Lost to the Bills. Won two more. Lost to the Bengals. That was a pretty low scoring game. Won two more. Lost to the Seahawks. Won two more again. Lost three in a row. And then beat the Colts. Got in a pretty big pattern there near the end of the season of just winning two, losing a couple, winning two, losing a couple, <laughs> winning two again, I think. Ezekiel Elliott wins MVP. This time, though, our quarterback throws for over 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, 14 picks. A good season, but still not really that much better than... I mean, it's, it's a lot better than last year. I meant to say it doesn't compare to his first season. His first season was unreal. Leonard Fournette over 1,000 yards with 10 touchdowns. It's a good season. Kevon Boone gets six touchdowns receiving. No one over 1,000 yards, but Keenan Allen, 954. Kind of surprising that he didn't get more than that. Keelan Cole, though, another great season. Austin Fran Jenkins, three touchdowns. D.D. Westbrook only got two. Blocking. How bad is this again? Apparently, sack numbers don't mean anything because David Bakhtiari will probably make the Pro Bowl again. David DeCastro, though, not great. 126 tackles from Miles Jack, 115 from Telvin Smith. 13 tackles for loss for... Uh, Vincent Evans, 11 from Taven Bryan. Sack numbers, not that many, I don't think. 8 from Sherrod Buchanan leads the team. 7 from Yannick Ngakwe. Really didn't get that many, you know, quarterback sacks for some reason. Interceptions, 6 again from Miles Jack. 4 from Jalen Ramsey. 3 from AJ Bouye. 1 from Kevin Bowers, Ronnie Harrison, and Keanu Neal. Any defensive touchdowns? I see at least one blocked kick, though. No defensive touchdowns. No safeties. And we have a one blocked kick from Sherrod Buchanan. He had a good season. 
I would have liked to have him in my all LSU team. He went to LSU, I think. 12th in the NFL on offense, 11th in the NFL on defense. Ezekiel Elliott wins MVP. Aaron Rodgers, though, still kicking. Comes in second. Matt Ryan is here, too. Chad Stout. I don't know who that is. We have Braden Herndon, though, coming in at number 10. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Herndon comes in seventh. Let's check out Defensive Player of the Year. Goes to Miles Jack. Of course it does. He had a great season. Telvin Smith comes in fifth. Nobody else from our team. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Nope. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Anybody from the Jags? I don't see anyone. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Nobody from the Jags. Best Quarterback. Braden Herndon comes in fourth. Best running back goes to Le'Veon Bell. Of course it does. Uh, Leonard Fournette, though, comes in seventh. James Conner on the Raiders? All right. Best wide receiver goes to Reed Warren. Interesting. On the Bills. Of course he's on the Bills. Blake Bortles making him look like a god. <laughs> Tyrell Williams goes off with Keenan Allen not here. Interesting. Keenan Allen, though, makes our list here, and so does Keelan Cole. Pretty cool. Best offensive lineman. Yeah, David Bakhtiari. Yeah, definitely the best offensive lineman. David DeCastro, Brandon Linder, Andrew Norwell are all in here too. I'm pretty sure it just goes by overall because Bakhtiari did not play well. Chris Jones is the best defensive lineman. They're, the Chiefs went 4-12. Wow. Uh, Sharab Buchanan comes in 7th. Yannick Ngakwe comes in 9th. Best linebacker goes to TJ. Watch Miles Jack gets robbed. Comes in 2nd. Uh, Telvin Smith comes in 7th. Best defensive back goes to Tyron Matthew. Jalen Ramsey comes in 5th though. AJ Bouye comes in 10th. Best kicker. Josh Lambeau makes it at number 10. All right, I'll take it. So we have to take on the Jets, I think. Is that what that said? Yeah, we take on the Jets, who are 8-8. Eight eight, but here's a look at the experience. Three experience points from Herndon. Pretty good. On the defense, three from a bunch of different players. That's what I like to see. I'll spend these, and then I'll send by the weeks. The team is now a 95 overall, with a 99 on both sides of the ball. Bars, by accident. But this team should win a Super Bowl. Our backup running back is an 87. I didn't even notice this. Wow, yeah, he's really good. This is a great running back committee. This is a really good team. Um, our spread scheme percentage is still really bad. So is the base 4-3. I don't really care, though. This team's going to do well. We should, if we lose to the Jets, we have to have such a better overall than them. We're a 95, and they are a 83. Come on, we have a 12-point advantage. Can we at least win one playoff game, please? I'm not going another season, so we have to win one here, or this rebuild sucked. Probably, it's probably going to suck. No, we actually won. All right, well, what was the score? 38 to 24. We have to take on the Ravens now. What's there overall? Can't be that good. 84, not too much better than the Jets. We still have an 11-point advantage. And I don't think it's going to matter. <laughs> Let's see. Advance to the conference championship. Are we in it? If we are, we're taking on the Steelers. No, we're not taking on the Steelers, but we are in it. We have to take on the Texans. Divisional rival here. Can we get this W? They probably have almost a 90 overall team by now, but still, we should still have a higher overall. Nope, they're only an 85. All right, this should be another pretty easy victory, I think. The Texans are pretty glitchy in simulation, though. Let's see. Let's advance to the Pro Bowl. Did we take down the Texans? We did. We're going to the Super Bowl against the Rams. Let me check out the Pro Bowl roster really quick. Let's take a quick break before we destroy the Rams. Deshaun Watson, Herndon, that's our guy, and Baker Mayfield are here. Le'Veon Bell, Alex Collins, Kareem Hunt, Patrick Ricard, and Whiteside are the fullbacks. Warren, Tyrell Williams, Keelan Cole, Farmer, Jarvis Landry, and T.Y. Hilton. Gronk Meadows, who's a 73 overall, and David Njoku. David Bakhtiari definitely does not deserve to be there. Ronnie Stanley, Joel Batonio, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder, and Lachey, Lachey, Lackey, I don't know. Shaq Mason, Zach Fulton, David DeCastro, and Orlando Brown make it. Joey Bosa, JJ Watts, uh, Chris Jones, Miles Garrett, Lewis, I'm not sure what his first name is, Sheldon Day, okay, and Buchanan, interesting. TJ Watt, Von Miller, Denzel Perriman, Ryan Shazier, J.D. Van Clowney, Telvin Smith, Kendall Fuller, yeah, it's Kendall Fuller, uh, Denzel Ward, Chris Harris, and Jalen Ramsey, um, Devin McCourty, Justin Evans makes it from the from the NFC, it's pretty cool. Manning, I'm not sure if this is Jabril Peppers, is up to a 94. Jamal Adams makes it too. Ryan Suckup, Hoffman, Boone, and Alexander round off the Pro Bowl roster. So let's see. Can we take down the Rams? I don't think we actually will be able to. This is definitely going to be the hardest team we've played this entire playoff run. Let's see what happens. Hopefully this rebuild can end positively. If anything, I mean, at least we made it to the Super Bowl. They are a 91 overall. Jeez. Okay, so we only have a four-point advantage. Let's see if we can win. This game is actually pretty close right now. It's 31 to 24, 31 to 31. Can we make this comeback? I think we were losing at some point. 38 to 31. Can we stop them? We did. 
Wow, what a Super Bowl. 38 to 31. It was back and forth pretty much the entire way. Neither defense could stop the other team's offense, but still, we won the game. We came away with a Super Bowl victory in the last season. At least that's one positive takeaway from this rebuild. We had a couple good years, drafted some great players, and made one amazing team. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.